Welcome to the first uh, director seminar for this academic year. My name is uh, Narayan Aduru. I'm one of the co-chairs for the men's team here. So it's my great pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Mr. John Pierre Liberton. And uh, he's a full-time faculty member in the nanoelectronics and nanomaterials uh, research team here. So he's a Beckman original. So I don't know how many of you know what that means. So he's been here since Beckman has been founded, 1989 onwards. So, so it's a great pleasure to have him here. So he got his PhD in uh, theoretical solid state physics from the University of Liège in Belgium in 1978. He came to Illinois in 1981. And uh, he's a faculty member in the ECE department, also in physics. And uh, he works on a number of... allows, in fact, these two disciplines, in fact, to, uh, to merge and see if we can do something. And there was, to my opinion, a lot of um, application with this, with this kind of hybrid system, which would be solid state and, of, uh, solid state and living uh, organism, uh, so that well, we can actually can increase tremendously uh, the functionality and the application in a large area of uh, 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 human science and technology. So today I'm going to talk about genomics uh, with semiconductor technology. So this is at the, really at the core of uh, uh, this synthesis between these two disciplines. And I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, my collaborator uh, for the moment. Um, so uh, Professor Aksimentiev in the Department of Physics, uh, my student uh, Anush Gerda, who is also a physics student, uh, and also Maria Gracheva, who actually was my postdoc before and uh, joined the uni Clarkson University um, several years ago. Also uh, Shatania uh, uh, Satain, uh, who also in ECE, who worked also in this, and uh, Professor Bashir, and Professor Schulten, who are a member of the Beckman Institute. So uh, the motivation, as I mentioned here, this is one particular case uh, that uh, where the biology and uh, the semiconductor nanotechnology uh, can find, actually, uh, I think, uh, uh, the best application in the sequencing of a DNA molecule. OK, uh, DNA is the molecule of life. Okay, and there was a tremendous interest, in fact, in being able to uh, determine the human genome of each individual in a low cost, very low cost, and rapidly. Okay, because uh, so this is actually there was one big project at uh, the National Institute of Health, which is uh, the genome, uh, the human genome, being able to achieve it. This is for less than a thousand dollars because uh, you can see. Uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, here is a map of uh, the cost per genome at the turn of the century. It costs actually 10 million to be able to sequence one, one of this genome. And we have been able, in fact, to reach uh, in the last 10 to 12 years, in fact, make tremendous progresses here. But this requires also uh, some kind of uh, lab, big lab, to do it. If we were able, in fact, to do this, uh, 
uh, on a device that is portable, okay, then uh, we can in fact do some uh, what is called personal medicine. And I think that uh, the um, project that I'm going to describe with you and that we, we started at the University of Illinois is maybe a way to achieve this where you could in fact not go to a central lab to get your uh, uh, genome um, detect, uh, detected, but uh, in fact you can do it automatically. You would actually carry this device here. There is a long way to go to do this, but nevertheless, and the basics uh, of this is in fact uh, in semiconductor technology. This is what, what we believe. Okay, so I want to, for those of you who are not familiar with biology or with uh, uh, genomics, uh, this, the central object is uh, this, uh, the, DNA, the DNA molecule, okay? And as you know, this is in fact a double helix Okay, here, and uh, this double helix carries uh, complexes or molecule on what is called a backbone. And there was, in fact, four kind of this molecule what we, that we call here uh, thymine, ganine, or thymine, ganine, uh, adenine, and uh, cytosine here. Uh, and so uh, this is all. Okay, and on the backbone here, uh, the A molecule always tied up to the T and the G with a C. Okay, um, and so the, our genetic patrimony or inheritance is in fact in the successions of uh, all of this uh, four bases there. And uh, the idea is in fact, once you can determine this succession here, you have actually all information about the human genome. Okay, but needless to say that this is a big molecule, it's very long, carry in fact uh, billions of, of this uh, basis and the arrangement is in fact um, is, is, is proper to each individual. So I just want to uh, uh, point your attention here on a detail is that uh, the, the way T and A bind and the way uh, G and C bind is that actually in this case, okay, between C and G, the, they are binding with three hydrogen uh, um, um, uh, bonds where the A and T is only with two, okay? And this is actually an important uh, observation when you want to uh, actually determine, uh, you know, which molecule you're dealing with, uh, as we will see uh, later on, okay? So, so, uh, so in a human cell, okay? So uh, I, I wanna mention that human cell is actually the basic building block of genomics or the basic unit of uh, human life uh, so it's, it's represented here. You have a tremendous number of a lot of complex biomolecules here. And this human cell uh, is in fact in uh, the body, okay, in water, and more or less not only in water, but in salted water. You know, the body contains a lot of uh, water, but also salt. It's important, in fact, that you have a right concentration of salt. And uh, this cell interacts uh, with the outside by some channel that you can see here. So there was a membrane here, they call a uh, lipid layer, and then you have this little channel. And this channel, in fact, regulates the concentration of this ion, salt ion, which is very basic uh, cell, potassium chlorine, for example, or sodium chlorine. And it's very important, in fact, that uh, you have the right concentration of salt. Otherwise, uh, so everything can go wrong here. And so that's actually what creates sickness and all kinds of sickness you can have. Uh, this is also some phenomena which are important for uh, muscles uh, and things like this. So uh, the, the mechanism by which this channel open and close biologically, uh, some of them have been determined, but some of them actually are still uh, under investigation and there was some uh, um, Still, some uh, some investigation. Actually, the make some of this uh, elucidation of this mechanism of this channel closing and opening have provided, uh, I guess, several uh, Nobel Nobel Prize. So there was still some some work to do. So uh, the idea. So and so uh, so not only do this channel here regulate the flow of this ions in the body, but uh, they also regulate the flow of biomolecule. And for example, uh, some of the complex in this the biomolecule long DNA can go to this, for example, DNA, okay? Uh, so, uh, so here is one of this 
um, uh, one of this, some of this channel, because there are many of this channel, okay, and you can see that, uh, uh, like in this case here, this is called alpha emolacin, this is one of the most studied uh, uh, ion channel, a biological ion channel, is made of a, a vestibule here, and uh, so, and then there was a, a bottleneck here, uh, which you can see the dimension here, this is 1.4 nanometer, and uh, uh, here this is in fact 2.6, there was another one, which is a more recent one, uh, and so uh, the idea, in fact, uh, for the poor is, in, is to uh, take a biomolecule and uh, the people, um, in fact, suggested that we may be uh, possible to get a DNA and flow it to this, to this uh, 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 port, so this channel here. And so when the molecule is in this channel, it's actually blocking, it's actually blocking the current the ion current. And uh, the idea was that maybe we can get some information when the molecule grow to this uh, channel by blocking the uh, ion current uh, uh, so that you can have some information on the sequence of uh, the, the base pair, which has this four molecule A, T, C, and G. Then this was actually a state, more or less, the state of mind uh, before 2000, and then uh, came the idea, well, but this is a biological pore, and this is in fact given by nature, okay? And I was at, as I was telling you before, uh, so semiconductor nanotechnology allows us, in fact, to reach uh, this kind of scale and to control them, all right? And so uh, there was some proposal uh, to make, in fact, pore with uh, dielectric, like here, uh, silicon nitride, Okay, and uh, you can see that technology allows you to make pore, which has the same dimension, uh, the aperture of this pore, we will call this a standard pore, which has the same dimension as the uh, um, pore, the biological pore. But then we had the idea, well, if you can do that with a material like silicon nitride, why can't we do this with semiconductor? Why is this? Because semiconductor is a very successful field, okay, where you can achieve a very uh, small dimension, but in addition to that, the semiconductor are very flexible materials, okay? You know that you can, in fact, control, first of all, they are electrically active, all right? Which molecules like this are not, and this molecule, they are not, they are a little bit electrical active, but you cannot control them. Okay, well, with semiconductor, right, you can not only control the size of the semiconductor and things like this, but you know that you can dope the semiconductor. You can actually introduce some impurity uh, in the semiconductor, which will provide you, in fact, what is called charge carriers, all right? And then you can, in fact, connect some of this semiconductor layer to voltage source so that the current can, can, can go through. So. We actually said, well, this is a tremendous opportunity here to take advantage of the technology, semiconducting technology, which allows us, in fact, to reach scale which are comparable to biological molecule. But in addition to that, it can also allow us to, uh, uh, control, uh, to control this layer externally by voltage source or current sources. And then uh, we can also measure the sources of current and voltage and then try to get information of what's going on, as we have been proposing here uh, several years ago, where uh, we would, in fact, try to mimic uh, a membrane, um, a, uh, a biological membrane, which, in fact, is a little polar. That means this, this biological membrane uh, carry two charges, plus and minus. We can do this with semiconductor by what we call doping uh, this layer, N-type and P-type. And if in addition to that, we can, we can actually connect this to the voltage source. And then this allows us, you know, if this represents a nanopore here, similar to this one here, control this nanopore to, uh, to control the electrical or the electrostatic landscape of the, of, of the pore. And this is important, controlling this landscape, because that way, when a molecule like DNA goes through, not only do you hope that you can control the way it goes through, the speed at which it goes through, and because there was some noise, uh, we can also try to maybe try to reduce this uh, uh, jiggling of, 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 the, the, of the molecule going to, um, uh, uh, through the pore here. In addition to that, 
okay? Uh, this is actually a cross-section, and we'll show it later on. We can also hope that the current can, can flow actually in this layer, and so the current encountering the, uh, the biomolecule which would be inside would in fact uh, interact with this molecule and give us some information about the molecule, and in particular, the sequence of bases in uh, the DNA molecule. So, uh, in fact, uh, this last idea was not, in fact, ours, um, uh, but because, uh, you know, some people have already thought about this, but not quite the same way as we did, okay? And here I would like to actually pay tribute to these people who have also worked in the field, like the Brantham Group at Harvard University. The idea was the, the one uh, a little bit similar to the one that I mentioned to you, where uh, here it would actually get this molecule here through the pore, and then it, they were hoping that the, each of the base of the DNA would form a bridge for the current to flow from one side to the other one, and the fact that it would be either a, a T base pair or GC would in fact be a different bridge with a particular resistance, and so would uh, provide some information about the sequence by the current which is uh, read on another side of the device. Now, I just want to just draw your attention on the fact that measuring a current, an electronic current, this is actually measuring an electronic current, is actually a measurement which could be very reliable and very fast. So the resolution would be essentially determined by the speed at which uh, the molecule here goes to uh, most of the, the poor, okay? Uh, okay, but before that, uh, the people also, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, use, wanted to use uh, the nanopore, biological pore, uh, to uh, get information on the blocking current, that means uh, you would have this ionic current flowing through, and the DNA being in this uh, pore here would in fact block this current, and depending of which basis Okay, this famous base of DNA would be uh, in the nanopore. That should give us some information about, uh, uh, would, will actually block the current differently, and uh, so uh, would give some information. This is in fact a trace, okay, as a function of time, of uh, the ionic current, and you can see this is a constant current, and each of this dip here is a signature of, in fact, uh, a DNA molecule uh, going to the pore. So you can see that there are many of them, and so by going to the pore, they, uh, they, they are blocking the current, okay? Then, uh, so the group of Decker at Delft University came with the idea, okay, replacing this uh, biopore with the solid, pore, solid state pore, the one that I mentioned before, silicon nitride, and so instead of doing this with uh, uh, biomolecule, biomembrane, do it by, with a solid state membrane. And then uh, there was also a scheme that we proposed when uh, Greg Timp uh, was, um, you know, uh, still uh, in, the, in the Bagman Institute, where we would made a pore um, with silicon technology, semiconductor technology, and the idea was to make a capacitor between two silicon layers here, uh, sand sandwiching a, an, an insulating layer, and trying to record the electrostatic signal on the capacitor, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> however, at that stage, at that stage, okay, uh, we had a problem for any kind of uh, measurement, either of this kind, of this kind here, with the resolution of semiconductor technology, because you should know um, that uh, here, in fact, the separation between two of this base here, which are essential, is in fact 3.4 angstrom. Okay, 3.4 angstrom, 0 0.34 angstrom. Funny? 0.34. No, no, this is nano, 0.34 nanometer, 3.4 angstrom. Okay, all right. So uh, this is nanometer, 0.34 nanometer. This is 3.4 angstrom. Okay, so uh, that's so it was difficult, in fact, to achieve this kind of thickness with uh, semiconductor technology at the time. Okay, so uh, the idea would have been, okay, can you get something which is, you know, which uh, which has this uh, uh, the, the, at least is smaller than the separation between this, and then, okay, then came graphene. Okay. So graphene, what is graphene? Well, graphene is, in fact, 
uh, is actually a, a compo well a, a derivative of graphite. A graphite is what? Well, this is one form of carbon. The other one is diamond. But this form of carbon is actually this structure, uh, which is hexagonal, okay, and you can peel it, okay? People have tried in the past to peel graphene and to get single monolayer of uh, this graphene. This is called graphite. A uh, graphene, excuse me, uh, sorry, single layer of graphite, which are called graphene. And this layer actually smaller than the separation between the base, okay? And so, it is, and how do you do this? Well, people have tried for many years, uh, and then these this people from, uh, at the time they were in, um, uh, I think it was in, in uh, Netherlands, okay, now they moved to uh, Manchester. Uh, Geim, and, uh, Geim and his team uh, have a very simple trick to obtain graphene, okay? Actually, graphite is a material by which you can make pencil here. Okay, so, so the pencil that you use is, are made of, of this graphite. And so what they took is they took scotch tape on the graphite and then they peel it, okay? All right, and they were able to have flakes and uh, this was it, all right? So this was not a very elegant method to get it. Now this, this has been refined, okay? And then they started to make experiment of the graphene, which was actually not possible before. People try with very sophisticated uh, epitaxy technique or whatever, it never, it never, it never happened. And that, that came the, the area of graphene and for which they got the Nobel Prize 2010. Okay, now that, if you manage to get graphene as shown here, this was the case, you know, this letter here represents schematically a DNA molecule, okay? You can see that the thickness of this is uh, several times uh, the separation between base pair. But now you get graphene, you can make a very simple layer, which in fact can uh, match, uh, you know, the, the thickness of each of this base pair every time they go to a nanopore, okay? And so, such people started to play with this, okay? And this is now a very, um, a very fruitful field, okay? Uh, so, um, so where uh, the people have used this now to uh, look at the transport, the ion transport, now the ionic transport across uh, the, the pore, okay? And as I showed before, this is in fact, again, the trace with the noise, and each of this dip here is in fact the signature that a DNA molecule is going to the pore and is blocking the current, okay? And you can see that by looking at high resolution of this dip here, which are here, okay, we can see that uh, the, this blocking current has a, a different uh, value, different amplitude, okay? Like this kind here, this is in fact, uh, uh, half the amplitude of, for example, this large dip here, okay? This one here block less than this one, and this was what identified as, you know, the DNA being folded like an F and going through. And being folded, okay, it's folded, it goes through, it's blocked the current more, okay? And so uh, this one here is all folded. You can see this is like an air pin here, right? So part of it is, is folded, and so first it go head on, with, with, with the f folding, and then when this is out, right, so now there was only the single molecule, and so in this case, uh, it blocks uh, only, uh, you know, at half of this value. And this is, in fact, for a single molecule which is unfolded. And so you can already get some information about what's going on, and in particular, uh, so different signature of the blocking current, in particular, uh, what can be done uh, that I don't show here is the, the width of this blocking current give you some information, or can give you some information of the length of the molecule that goes through, because they all go through with a particular, with a particular speed, okay? So uh, this was a way, in fact, to get some information about the molecule going through the system, right? Uh, so, uh, so we did some simulation uh, with graphene, uh, with, um, with uh, our student, uh, uh, Shatania, this was one of the first, the first paper, where in fact we would uh, try to get something more from this blocking current, okay, by using a sheet of graphene, uh, where uh, in fact what we would do is we would take the, the pore, the, the hole which is in graphene, and we will decorate it with charge. We will put some charge, some, some charge. And uh, we will put two kinds of charge. Okay, in fact, uh, this is shown here, this Q here, plus minus uh, 3.6 electron. This is in fact the charge of the electron, so we would just 
see what's going on with the simulation if you put ch some charge uh, around it, okay? And uh, so what we saw is that, uh, in fact, it has an influence on the speed at which the DNA goes to this, uh, to this pore, okay? Why is this? Well, because, and I didn't tell you that yet, the DNA molecule carried a charge, okay? Which is a negative charge, roughly one electron per base pair. So it's negatively charged, okay? So if you, in fact, put some uh, positive charge uh, around uh, the DNA, around the, the, the pore, then this is easier for uh, the DNA to go through. And this is what we saw here in the simulation. So this is, in fact, the trace. This is a center of mass of the DNA going to the pore as a function of time, okay, the time it takes. And this is, in fact, the blue one is for putting a positive charge around the pore, and so the DNA has no problem going through. This uh, red one here, right, is when we put a negative charge. Now we put a negative charge, the DNA with a negative charge come in front of the, uh, the pore, and they also see some negative charge too, so it doesn't like that. But nevertheless, okay, in order for the DNA to go through, we, of course, apply externally an electric field, and so it has a, a larger resistance, okay? And uh, so, I just want to show you the movie uh, of, uh, so this is for P charge and N charge, and you can see that the P charge go uh, to the pole much more rapidly than the N charge. You can see it's a little bit stuck here. Notice also something very important here with graphene, which is an important fact, uh, is that it stick. It stick, you know, the DNA stick to, to graphene. That's because there is what is called a strong hydrophobic, okay, uh, interaction. Uh, between DNA and graphene so that they don't want to have water. And so in this case, they are, they are actually sticking, he, sticking to the graphene. And uh, this can be used, in fact, uh, for certain application. Uh, on the one, uh, you know, this could be a detrimental. There was a lot of, in fact, physics here that I don't want to spend my time on because uh, I would like to show you uh, more uh, about uh, the simulation we have done. Uh, for example, uh, within the same... Um, paper, what we did uh, is that taking two kind of molecule, uh, you have a, a DNA molecule here, which is, which is in fact a double-stranded DNA made only on AT base, and this one here made only on GC base, okay? And I remind you that, uh, as I mentioned in the first view graph, that the AT bonding is with two hydrogen atom, okay? So when the GC bonding is with three hydrogen atoms, so this is much stronger, okay? And so we look at the blocking current, again, the blocking current uh, to the pore as a function of the applied voltage when a DNA goes through. And the idea was this one, is the following one. Thus, a, molecule, a DNA molecule made of AT base pair uh, block the current less than uh, a one make with three bonds, which is actually much stronger, okay? And uh, if you apply low voltage, you don't have much more difference between them. Actually, uh, I also want to show you the movie, okay? The movie here, but here we realize that for one volt, there was nothing particular with one volt because the important thing is the electric field. Then there was, you can see that the AT pair, uh, the current is larger than actually in the GC pair, okay? That means that the GC pair is blocking the current much more strongly than the AT pair. So that this, this guy here, because they have three bonds, okay, uh, block the current better. And so this would be a way maybe to differentiate between these two kinds of pair. Uh, you can see here that although this uh, molecule stay more or less uh, in this what you call beta uh, conformation, uh, this one is distorted. And the distortion, okay, come from the fact that uh, it, is, it has only two hydrogen bonds and, and, and the two uh, backbone are, not, uh, are less strongly uh, bonded than, in fact, uh, the GC uh, molecule, okay? All right, so this was... Uh, analysis that we did for, uh, you know, what, for the blocking current, can we, can we find something uh, interesting uh, to detect uh, with the blocking current in graphene? Okay, and now, um, then uh, we came with the, the following idea. Yes? Uh, 
that you, the result you showed was uh, the two strands, they both uh, 80 with just 80 and just G. Yes. If you had mixed, is it the show, show similar? That we haven't, well, then, then we haven't done. Okay, but you know, that you have to have much larger resolution. This is actually a first shot, okay? But it, tell, it was telling us that, well, maybe there was something uh, interesting uh, to, to look at here. It, of course, the idea would be, okay, now for each base pair, okay, going through, is it going actually to change as a function of, uh, you know, the, the kind of pair? That would be the idea, okay? Unfortunately, the molecule is moving not only this way, but is moving that way, okay, and it's, it's sometimes very difficult to distinguish. But nevertheless, this was a, 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 a finding, okay? So, uh, now came uh, the idea of, okay, can we use, so far, what we have done with this graphene is using it as a passive element. So it's just a hole, a uh, very narrow, thin hole, okay. So now can we take advantage of the graphene electronic property? Because uh, aside from being very thin, it has extremely good electronic properties. That means that it can carry a very large current and the carrier, the charge carrier to this current can go very fast, okay? So, and in particular in uh, in, in, in semiconductor physics, there was a kind of structure that we call quantum point contact here, which are in fact structure with a constriction. So this is, in fact, this is, a, this is a piece of graphene, and then you can see here we put a constriction, right? A constriction, and then we say, what, why don't we put the pore in the set, well, on, on, in the constriction. Why constriction? Actually, the fact that you have a constriction, the shape of the constriction uh, shouldn't matter. You can, in fact, have a piece of graphene, damage it up to some point in here, but be sure that, in fact, the current flow, uh, you know, around the pore. This is important because you are forcing the electron or the charge carrier to go, you know, around the pore and in that way to, in fact, sense what's going on around the pore. Okay, now, uh, what is called the conductance of this kind of structure, independently of the fact that this is uh, for, uh, with a pore or not, what we call quantum point contact, is, in, is a very nonlinear function of, you know, the, what we call the gate voltage or the number of uh, charge carrier which the free electron that sits there, okay? Uh, so you can see conductance, what is a conductance? Conductance is, is, is the ability to, uh, this is an intrinsic property of, uh, you know, this kind of um, uh, structure here, but uh, which allows you to, uh, to carry the current. And this conductance is, is, is actually this non, what you call nonlinear. It doesn't grow as a function. The more carrier you put here, okay, uh, the conductance doesn't vary with the number of carrier here. It has what is called this kind of, step shape, okay, this step shape. And so getting this step shape, okay, you can see that if you change a little bit here, what we call the gate voltage, and I will define this in a few minutes, okay, you, you can see that changing a little bit this gives you a large change in the conductance. So that means that a structure like this is very sensitive to uh, what would go on around the pore, in the pore here and in the constriction. Because if you don't have many carriers, so nothing will happen, and then if you have a lot, then you would go to this uh, uh, plateau here. But in between, this is where the regime is interesting because it is very sensitive. Any small change of voltage here or electrostatic potential around it if, should give you a large change in the conductance. So that would make a very sensitive structure. So, uh, so that's what uh, we proposed, in fact, uh, last year to make not only a membrane which is electrically active, but to configure your membrane as one of the fundamental structure in uh, electronics, which is a building block of our computer today, which is a transistor. And so we would have exactly like a transistor, okay, sitting, this is a solution with a DNA, and so we would have a layer of, uh, of graphene here, and uh, the uh, transparent blue area here would be dielectric to isolate it from here in green, what is called a gate. Okay, and so you have essentially a capacitor between the graphene and this gate, and so if you charge this uh, green layer here, 
uh, which would be a metal or close to a metal, okay, it induces, in fact, a similar change, op opposite sign of change in the graphene. And so by tuning this, by changing the bias here, which is in fact the gate voltage, uh, you would change the concentration, the carrier concentration in the graphene. And so, and along the, along the line here, you would apply a bias. So this is what is called a three-terminal device, and uh, this, is a base, this, is a trans, this is in fact a transistor, okay? So we would just use a structure like this and try to see if in fact, uh, by using this, we can get some information about what's going on when, when the DNA goes to the pore, okay? Then it will change, in fact, the electrostatic landscape around the constriction here and will in fact change the current. And that change in the current can be in fact controlled by uh, the gate bias here, okay? So I don't want to spend some time here. This is a formalism, which is a quantum mechanical formalism, which has been used to study the transport here, which has been uh, developed by uh, Anouj uh, Girdar, my student. And then uh, I'm going to stop here, but what this, I just want to show you this result. So this is this famous conductance uh, that I was talking about, okay? That show, and this is in fact, what we call in, in, in semiconductor technologies a Fermi energy, which is related to this famous gate bias. And so you can see that this conductance as a function of the gate bias vary. Okay, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, okay, we have we put uh, the uh, the pore the, the pore at two, this is actually for a ribbon. There was no constriction. We carry okay. This is in fact with a constriction, the quantum point contact, and we put in fact. Uh, the pore, not only as a center, but also off center. And the, the, the lesson that, the, that we can learn from this is that not only does the position of the pore matter in the constriction, okay, uh, which is something that technologically would be difficult to control, okay, but by the fact that we can vary, in fact, in addition to the pore, we can, in fact, vary uh, the care concentration here would allow us to correct and to explore what is the region of the higher sensitivity for this, um, for this uh, um, uh, graphene layer, okay? So this is famous con uh, conduct. And then um, uh, that's actually the, conduct the electronic conductance here, and so far there was nothing. There was in fact nothing into this pore, okay? And then, uh, so you can see, for example, if you manage to get the care concentration somewhere here, Right? Uh, uh, right here, so you would have, for example, every time that, you know, uh, you would change this a little bit because, uh, you know, the, um, uh, in the pore, the electronic charge would in fact change this conductance because the, the charge carrier will interact, this would give you a large uh, sensitivity. Okay, so uh, now we put a charge into it. What we saw, we put a charge into it and uh, so we took a pore in the center and then uh, one electron south and this is one electron west. That means that we put an electron somewhere here in the pore and a charge of one electron and the west some, some, somewhere here. This is a nano ribbon. This is, as you can see, this is a, a stripe of graphene. Okay, that doesn't change. And you can see that when we put the two electrons, there was little change in the conductance. This G minus G naught, this is a conductance without charge, and this is a conductance with charge, so the difference here for large range of energy is zero. But once you put this constriction here, then you can see that there was a large variation. And this large variation is, is actually telling you, especially at a point like this, or a point like this, that in fact there was a charge in the pore. Okay, so which allows, which actually is telling us that this kind of structure is relatively well suited to, to measure, to have be very sensitive to the presence of a charge within the pore. Okay, uh, so I'm going to continue. So uh, we did some model that we call self-consistent model, where now we put a real DNA to the system, okay, and uh, so what we could see, uh, but the DNA goes through because of the helicoidal structure of the DNA here, so when it goes through, well, and if you are sitting on the graphene here, you can see that the potential, the electrostatic potential due to the DNA here is in fact uh, going to change. And this is, you can see this rotation, this is a potential induced by the DNA is rotating when you go to the pore, 
right? That's position A, B, C, D, and this B, D, C, D, and, and just come back. So this, and this rotation is periodic because of the periodicity of the helix here. Okay, and so uh, we did some calculation, and this is in fact the conductance which is measured in the in the graphene, and show in fact this uh, periodicity. So when the DNA goes to the to the pore, the current okay vary periodically as a function of the charge seen by uh, the pore, the graphene pore in uh, uh, you know um, of the DNA. Okay, and this is actually so you can see. Actually, we can identify here e, A, B, C, D, each of the position of the DNA go, going through. Okay? Again, there was a lot of uh, interpretation here uh, that I'm not going to uh, describe because I can see that my time is, is running out, okay? but showing that uh, indeed this is possible. Now, one of the last uh, things that we did uh, here is in fact see if in this kind of uh, structure here, we can, we can uh, see, detect a change of conformation in the DNA where uh, we will stretch the DNA. We can, we can actually stretch the DNA and be, by stretching the DNA, we, can, we go from this helicoidal structure here to a ladder structure there. Okay? This is in fact for different kind of uh, stretching. Uh, and so of course, you have to apply a force and this force can be applied electrically or by optical tweezer. And of course, if you get this, this, kind of, this kind of shape or this kind of shape in the pore, all right, eventually you expect uh, the, the, the variation of the current when the DNA goes through the pore to vary. Okay? In particular, for a structure like this, you expect to see, as I mentioned before, a current that vary as a function of time periodically, where for this, this is rather uniform, if all the bases are the same, then the current doesn't vary, okay? Uh, and so, uh, that's actually the picture of the force as a function of the extension, the applied force in pico-newton as a function of the extension here. And you can see that as we apply this, this is the angle, okay, between uh, two bases, okay, this, because with the helicoidal el structure, you you know you have you, you pick up two 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 base a pair, and then if you stretch it, the angle actually going to be z they start with something like 180 degree and start to uh, goes to zero. And the idea here would have been can again can we detect a change? Sorry, can we detect a change between AT and GC base pair? Okay, why? Because they would have different kind of bonding, so the force to stretch them would be, would be different. Okay, and so this difference would be in fact recorded in the current that goes uh, to the graphene. Okay, and so we have actually for this, we cannot do this on one simulation because uh, there was some kind of noise due to the change of conformation. So we hope to get some uh, statistical average. Okay, so you can see here we run five simulation, but this was already a tremendous amount of uh, CPU time and took a lot of time and uh, it was not, probably not enough to get a statistical average. Uh, you can see uh, for, the, for four of this simulation here, we can see an, an extension, the angle changed rapidly here. And, and this is actually done for AT base pair. Okay, but this particular simulation, in fact, uh, give us a much more progressive change. So we, 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 we have some kind of uh, uh, you know, statistical noise even in, in the stretching here. And then uh, on this diagram here, uh, we can see, um, in fact, the change of the conductance in graphene now, okay, which is due to a DNA going to the pore and which is stretched. You can see that for a position A, when you have the helicoidal structure, you can see some kind of oscillation when we start to stretch it, and it's very stretched, so the conductance is flat. So we don't see, in fact, this periodic structure going through. Okay, so um, so uh, this would be a way to um, uh, to identify more or less a conformation change uh, of the DNA. And then uh, we did this, as I mentioned, again for AT and GC pair. Okay, and we were hoping that at some point of, as a function of the extension, we would be, see a difference. And indeed we saw one. So if the extension is very small, so you know the two, the, the differential conductance is, is uh, between the two pair is very, uh, very small. In this area here, which is a transition, okay, here the extension 
they are completely ladder form, okay? So they recover the same form, but here in the transition region, we insist to do something here. However, the noise or the statistical deviation was in fact very important, so which didn't allow us to uh, differentiate between the two. However, uh, I, my gut feeling is probably telling me that we should probably see this should we run two more, uh, much more simulation, but uh, right now uh, this is kind of uh, uh, prohibitive. Okay, uh, so, uh, so I just briefly uh, going to go to some of the simulation that we have done on this membrane transistor by which, uh, you know, we, how we can see that by applying a gate bias here to this graphene layer which is sandwiched between two dielectric here and controlling uh, the, the, the carrier concentration here by the gate, uh, we could in fact uh, increase the sensitivity of the graphene layer. So this is a typical kind of uh, uh, device simulation uh, borrowed from uh, semiconductor nanotechnology. Okay, this is here cross-section of the device. Okay, uh, you have the layer graphene here. We put some silicon dielectric on top, and this is a large uh, uh, dielectric here, and we put the gate here. And the, by biasing this gate, we hope actually to change, uh, in fact, the concentration and the potential here when the DNA is going through. Okay, this is a flow chart. We will use molecular dynamic to get us you know, the information about the DNA going through, and then the self-consistent, we put a self-consistent poisson schrodinger solver, and then a time-binding calculation, which is calcu that calculate the current here. Uh, that's actually the picture of uh, the electrostatic within the pore for different kind of uh, potential applied to the gate. Right here, uh, I don't want to go to detail. Uh, the important picture is this one here. This is, in fact, uh, top section of uh, the carrier concentration, electron here and holes. Holes are actually uh, the opposite of uh, electrons as a function of the, the, the this gate bias. And you can see that you can control the carrier concentration around the pore, which would make the pore, in fact, much more sensitive. This is uh, this actually for four voltages applied to uh, the gate, minus four volt, zero volt, and, and plus four volt. And this is uh, for the same voltage, but now this is for hole. We can see that when you have no electron, you have a lot of holes. When you have a lot of electron, you have less holes. That's actually due to the, the change in the potential. Okay, uh, so, and you can see this is in fact the sensitivity uh, as a function of, uh, you know, this gate voltage, which shows uh, depending uh, where, where is the molecule that this is, for example, in this range here, we have large sensitivity. Okay, uh, so uh, now uh, I just come back to a, to a, uh, and also the structure that I show you in one of my previous slides about engineering the membrane, okay? Not only do you want, uh, in fact, to be able to measure it, as I mentioned, you want also to, to be able to control the motion of the molecule across the pore, not only vertically, but also um, uh, laterally. Why laterally? Because if this actually flows that much, okay, you are not going to get a good reading. So for this, we made early calculation already in 2007, uh, emphasizing the importance of semiconductor technologies. This is a picture that I showed before, and I was telling you this is mimicking a biological membrane. This is the structure of biological membrane. You can see here there was also a polarity, positive charge on the top, negative charge on the bottom. And so this, and biasing, but biasing this layer here allows us, in fact, to control the landscape electrostatically and hopefully to prevent the molecule, the DNA molecule, which is negatively charged, in fact, to move uh, too, too much into uh, the pore. Okay, biology, you cannot connect this to a voltage source, so you cannot control this. This is, they are not tunable, okay? Uh, so, and uh, so we show here, and I go quickly that, in fact, you can make an ionic transistor, which is rectifier, and then you can uh, control the flow of ion into the pore Okay, with this kind of layer, it can be ohmic, like in a metal, or it can be rectifying, what, like in, in a rectifier, like a PN junction, okay? Uh, and so, and this has been demonstrated, and then, uh, finally, I'd like to show that, again, what you can do with this, is you can slow down, you can slow down, in fact, uh, the molecule going on. And this is important, because by slowing it down, you can have a much, much more time to have a reading 
on uh, the DNA molecule when it goes to it. This was done in collaboration with my former uh, uh, a postdoc, Maria Gracheva, who is now at class on, not only can you slow it down, but as it's shown here, you can also stretch it. And I was mentioning it before, the way to stretch it, you can detect also this stretching. Okay, so semiconductor technology, in principle, should allow you uh, in, to control the, uh, the DNA, uh, the motion of the DNA going to uh, the port. Okay, uh, and then uh, this is uh, one of my, this is my last view graph here, that uh, show how we can, in fact, implement the basic struct transistor that I showed you uh, uh, with uh, many, many layers, okay? We still have the gate here, which control with the sensitivity of uh, the graphene layer uh, to, to measure DNA, but we can, we can also, as I showed in the last uh, view graph, imagine that we could have additional layer, either graphene or the material, where this layer would, in fact, control not only the horizontal motion, lateral motion of the DNA, but also the speed at which each of the base pair would go into, uh, into the pore, okay? And, okay, this is actually where we are aimed to, okay, with collaboration with uh, uh, Professor Bashir, now in the Department of Biotech Engineering, who is, in fact, uh, trying to m make, have a multi-layer structure like this, uh, we still have some technological issue on the size of the pore, we being able to control, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the DNA and the leakage, actually, uh, between the ionic current and uh, the um, electronic current. Okay? And these are my conclusion. Okay? So where um, I, I hope to have shown you that uh, semiconductor technology uh, as because of its flexibility has a high potential for uh, merging with biology, especially for application in uh, DNA sequencing. The flexibility relies on uh, the fact that you have, you can make multi-layer, you can dope them, different kind of doping, different kind of charge carrier, okay? And of course, I, I, I showed also the uh, tremendous importance of graphene, which because of its very uh, thickness is, is able to have a high spatial resolution on uh, the DNA sequencing, okay? It is also an excellent material for uh, electronic properties as well as mechanical properties, okay? Uh, Mention also that we propose to use constriction, what we call graph quantum point contact, UPC, uh, within a transistor to have a better control on, on, on this, um, uh, on the sensitivity of uh, the graphene layer and uh, then uh, to one multilayer tra uh, uh, QPC transistor where would have not only control of the DNA but also the measurement. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, time for a few questions. Yeah. How do you make the hole? Uh, the hole, a different technique to make the hole, uh, but the, in principle, I, I, I'm not doing that. I mean, this, uh, my experimental colleagues are doing they use uh, ultra bright electron beam lithography. And this is really a tricky process. This is a very tricky process, okay? Uh, not everybody is able, in fact, to do it. You need to have a lot of trial and error and finally try to, 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 to master the technology. It's also very expensive. Well, all of this could be very expensive, right? You, you know, that's because you, you have, even to, to make the device is something which is very expensive, okay? Very expensive. Yeah. Uh, based on your simulation, how much can be slowed down the DNA? Because since that uh, uh, with Oxford nanopore, that's the problem. Because they claim that uh, just passing the DNA through the biological pore can get a uh, speed of 100, 100 kV per second. So, so the problem is that the speed yeah, of the DNA is too fast passing the nanopore. Yeah, this is this is a main issue. Okay, and I know that Oxford nanopore we were we are funded actually by Oxford nanopore technology to investigate it. Uh, we, so far, uh, we haven't been able to show uh, how, by how much we can, uh, but we are in the process of doing it, okay? There was different kind of things you can use, okay? For example, uh, one of uh, the idea of my uh, colleague, uh, Professor Aksimentiev, has been, in fact, to put some graphene layer, uh, sandwiching a dielectric and then the reading layer in the middle, and then because uh, Graphene, gra uh, DNA is thick on graphene, okay? It's thick on graphene. Try to bias graphene to slow it down into the pore, okay? But then you can have a reduction of the speed of a factor two to three, 
Okay, so we need to have something better. So what we are hoping, this is what I show you, is having additional layer there, okay, uh, of which you can control the thickness, for, by the way, okay? You can, don't need actually to use graphene, you can use another material, like semiconductor material, whatever. And then uh, biasing this layer negatively so that the DNA, you can, the DNA would go slowly uh, to the pore, okay? Uh, this is also a very, very uh, uh, subtle technology. And we have, in fact, to design the membrane accordingly so that in f we can uh, obtain this, this slowdown. Okay? Yes? I was, is that right? yeah. I was wondering uh, what kind of, what type of element you're using, finite element you're using for the, for the DNA? For what? For the DNA. The type of element. What kind of element? Finite element. I mean, you're doing simulation. No, the DNA, the DNA is, 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 is simulated by conventional molecular dynamics with a program which is called NAMD, which has been developed by my colleague, uh, Professor Schulten. Okay? And uh, he has a software to, you can put, I, don't, I wouldn't say as many uh, DNA molecules into solution because the more you, you do, the more expensive it is. But, so the idea is to you construct the DNA, okay? and then uh, you put in a solution in water, salt, okay, and then uh, everything is controlled by Newton mechanics, so this is that, there, there was no quantum mechanics, is it, okay, but you have to keep track of the motion of each of this uh, individual uh, molecule, okay, not only molecule, but molecule of water and molecule and, 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 and the salt, and all of this is within a program, and this, this, this is this, if you want interested in to, I would, uh, uh, you know, just uh, relay you to uh, the group of Professor Schulten who, de who defined uh, this, um, this uh, software. Yes. How, do, how would the real DNA molecule be able to be stretched? What mechanism would be used? Are using the multi layers to stretch? Yeah, well, some of the idea would be actually to use multi layer, okay? So that you can, be, you put two layers like this in a dielectric and you apply bias, okay? So you would stretch, okay? You would stretch it. This is one way to do it, okay? Another way would be actually to, to use an optical tweezer. All right, well, you also can obtain this, this stretching here and concentrate it on, on the DNA, okay? But we have, we have also to be, able, to be able to show that. All right, any other questions? All right, let's, oh, one more question, okay. So the NPC type of ICD, you said the variation of conductance is highly nonlinear. So isn't it something which is not desired from a device point of view? No, no, it is. It is, it is, it is desired. In any device you want, you, any device you want to get, you want to have a nonlinearity, because as I, as I showed here, uh, right? Uh, oops. Hmm? Actually, you can see. Well, in this you have some 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 um, some consequence of this nonlinearity here, especially right here. Uh, and uh, oh, sorry, what is it? What did I do here? Okay, uh, right here. The, the idea is to exploit it here because you have the higher sensitivity there. Right, because of the large, the, the race, a small change here, which could be uh, assimilated to a small change of um, a potential within the pore, you would get a large change in the conduct. From conduct. detection point of view, but from calibration point of view, it's so hard, right? If you have nonlinear variation. Yeah, so but yes, but 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 don't for uh, something. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that to you. Okay, one of the things which is extremely difficult is, uh, in fact. Uh, to control, to control when you make structure like this, uh, like a, a ribbon or things like this, is actually to control the edge here. Okay, that's very difficult. All right, and so with the edge here, the presence of the edge, because the edge are not only close to the pore, they are close to the pore. Okay, but they are also determining the transmission. Even if you don't have a pore, this edge here determines the transmission of electron across here. Okay, and this is, <coughs> people dealing with, with graphene technology will tell you that it's extremely difficult. So, if you have another tool, 
at you, another way, not enough, at your disposal, in fact, to correct for all of this st stuff and bring everything close to this uh, very sensitive region, then I think this is a benefit and this is not a drawback, okay? Other question? Yes? Uh, would the sensing be done like in a droplet or in a bulk solution? Pardon me? Uh, would the sensing be done in a droplet or a bulk solution whenever you're trying to like uh, determine the DNA sequence and you're running it through the pore? Would that be a droplet that you have the DNA solution? It's a cell. Okay. It's, it's just a cell. Uh, I show. Uh, I show, uh, yeah, I, sh I show a picture of, uh, uh, yeah, here, for example. This is an example right here, okay? This is, a, this is actually a cell which is divided into sub-cell, okay? So here you have, uh, you have an electrolyte, okay, water with salt, and water with salt here. And then, <clears throat> then you have the membrane, okay, that separates them, okay, with a pore. Right, and uh, so uh, in one of the cell you put the DNA, all the DNA are there, okay, and then you apply, uh, they are, yeah, and they are here, and then you apply a bias. You see, this is another all, all the electrode. You have to drive the DNA to the pore, okay, as because the DNA is negatively charged, okay, they will actually try, they will go stochastically, and they will find a way to the pore and go down here, okay, and so does the current. Okay, the current, the ionic current that I was mentioning is in fact driven by, by this electrode there. Okay? So it's just this is a cell. Okay? Questions? 